Hey guys, welcome back to Artosis Cast, and welcome to the round of four in the CNSL season seven. Our second match will be Miso versus Motive, but first we're gonna be doing Scan versus Yoon. What a sick match this is going to be. Scan, an ex-champion of the CNSL, I believe it was season five that he picked up, and now going against someone who has kind of turned into a little bit of his nemesis, Yoon. Uh, you guys may or may not remember, but they both made the ACS top four at the same time. They fought in the finals, and Yoon was able to take Scan down. Now, here they are in this round of four, playing a best of seven. I gotta say, I think that Scan is gonna get his revenge, uh, but Yoon has been playing brilliantly as well. Really, I think Scan has looked like the best player in the tournament. Uh, not just saying that either, because he's a friend or anything. Like, he really has been playing out of his mind. Some of the best TVPs that I have seen in recent memory. Let's see if his Terran versus Serg can stand up to it. First map going to be Retro, and let's jump into that game. In the top left, our Zerg player. It is Yoon. And in the bottom right, our Terran Scan. All right. Oh, man, I'm actually super, super excited. Uh, to be able to cast this for you guys like this is I, I mean I love watching scan games in general I've, I've probably watched him more than anyone that isn't in ASL completely regularly of course scan has been there before and I have no doubt that he will be back has been making it to the uh, finals of the qualifiers basically every time and then losing to really top tier players so uh, you know he's really on the brink of just being an ASL regular all the time and it looks like here he's going to do a 4-8 racks, but just a little bit of a 4-8 racks. So this is going to be a more economical 8 uh, racks build. This will probably go into an expansion. It looks to me like he's going to... Wait, is he going to send an SCV? Yeah, there it is. Okay, because you have to send an SCV well before this one's done. It actually got stuck there for a moment. So we're going to see that it's going to get a little over 100 minerals before it gets down there. That's okay. It's pretty well timed out. If it hadn't gotten stuck, it would have been perfect. Uh, but yeah, he's basically making it so that his barracks can fly back and have a wall, right? So this is a very economic 8 racks, which is a good thing for him in a way because this is cross-spawn and hatchery first, right? So this is actually a very hard build to play against if they're cross-spawn on a four-player map when you do this. If they're close-spawn, I feel like this is an advantaged build against almost everything. Uh, maybe certain Zergling rushes would be advantaged against it. Uh, but that would also have to do with like the movement of the Zerglings and whether you see them or not. But against cross spawn, I feel like this is disadvantaged, right? Because the eight racks is looking to get, and I've, I know I've said this a few times, but uh, a few times, probably quite a few times, like every time there's an eight racks, I do have to mention that like you're looking to kill like two drones, right? Uh, if you get less than that, you're basically just behind with it. Uh, if you get more than that, you're you're definitely ahead with it. Now he sends the two SCVs, right? This one goes home. And this one saw the Overlord. I think the drone may have seen it, so I think he has a good idea that it's probably an 8-Rax. And he starts sending. Now, if this was a 9-Pool, Scan would be in trouble right now. There would be Lings catching him right here. And he would lose all this, and the game would be over. Uh, so he's just kind of gambling that it is a hatchery first in this cross-spawn position. And starts his bunker. So basically, like, the travel distance makes it a bit harder to get any damage. Here come the drones... And Lings are already on the way, right? It was still, the Lings are going to be out pretty quickly here. I mean, is he going to be able to get damage is the question. Trying to poke up, trying to poke up. Gets that bunker started again. When you start the bunker, it makes the drones die, basically, guys. He, he doesn't think he's going to get in that bunker and utilize it. Well, he actually finishes, so maybe, maybe he does. Maybe it has to do with the micro, though. And so we have three drone kills so far, but I don't think that the bunker is actually going to do anything. So, like, the bunker is actually, like, a little bit of a mistake. It makes up partially for one of those drone kills, I think. Now, that being said, he's only making drones. He thought Scan was going to turn around. And if he had if he had made six more links and Scan didn't turn around, then he would really punish him here. Uh, but you, Scan stayed, and he did make drones, so has to fight again with said drones. Okay, kills off the Marines. That should be it for the rush. And we should see a command center going down. Uh, okay, so where are we at after all of that? 
Uh, I think it's right around even right now. I'm going to be honest with you. It's it's close to even. And in fact, the the fact that he made two bunkers, and I believe did both those SCVs die that were up there. Uh, either way, like I look at this. Yeah, it was three drone kills, but again, a lot of times with eight racks, you just start the bunker and you never finish and you cancel it, so you get 75 minerals back. It's just the bunker forces the drones to fight, basically, right? Because if they don't fight, then you have a bunker and it's going to be really messy for Zerg. Uh, so yeah, I actually put Yoon slightly ahead. Just slightly. But this is, this is a close, very playable position, uh, whatever your opinion may be on it. Um... You know, some of these positions you look at and you're like, oh, yeah, okay, so the, the bunkers and then, you know, okay, it was the extra drone kill that you are looking for, but now the command center is maybe a little bit later, right? There's like a lot of moving pieces that can make it a little bit hard to decide where where the game is going, where the game is favored. But yeah, I would I would generally say you slightly ahead here with uh, a very playable position for both sides. Okay, let's take a look at the follow-ups, right? Layer is on the way. Obviously, quite a bit later than he would have liked. And we have a third hatchery in the main base. So, very safe. He's actually extremely drone heavy compared to Scan. Okay, Scan here has not gone for a follow up pressure. Instead, he's gone for a very fast plus one, which is a, a, a this is an excellent build when you have a wall. Anytime you have a wall, a plus one build is very, very nice. Uh, now, Scan getting that academy, of course, as well. Gonna start some barracks, and we'll see how many barracks he actually wants to go for. Uh, generally, it's going to be four with a fast plus one build. Now, because it was an eight racks, you might be able to get away with five. Also, I actually like, and I feel like it's not super trendy, but there are three barracks plus one builds. Mostly me who does it, but I actually think it's a it's a very cool build because it, it keeps your upgrades really strong and like your one one is going to be very, very quick and everything. And uh, you actually still get your factory really quickly. What the four racks does is it generally slows your factory quite a bit. And in fact, he's going five racks, right? So like I said, right, the, it, it, if you go eight racks, it might sound counterintuitive. But the reason you can go five barracks, and this is this is like always a, the reason basically behind everything in this matchup is the speed of the mutalisks, right? Against a regular two hatch play, the mutas come out so quick, you can't really afford the fifth racks. It's kind of an all in build because you can barely make any turrets. Here, the mutas are so much later. Like, generally, the mutas would already be here, by the way. The mutas will, oftentimes, the two racks play cross-spawn. They'll be in your base at, like, six minutes, 30 seconds. But you can see how much quicker, uh, well, how much slower the mutas are because they both had to do so many things in the early game, right? Like, there was so much battling going on. So, Scan starts his turrets just at the right time. He hits some scans, so he knows. Uh, Yoon, by the way, nice, fast third base over here at 9 o'clock. But yeah, I think uh, Scan has chosen for sure a definitely uh, a, a very strong build here. And we're going to have to see how Yoon wants to play against it. Okay, so a Hydralisk Den gets started. This is kind of an important moment. How many Mutalisks are we going to see? This is going to have to be very quick Lurker. So basically, Yoon wants to have enough Mutas to hold this back for now and then get into Lurkers. So if you're going really heavily on the bio and your opponent has Lurkers up at the third base and they're natural before you can do any damage with this, this build becomes unfavored, right? Like, it's it, this is a build that generally you're using to either try to kill your opponent or to prevent slash th uh, slow down the third base. But the third base is already up and the lurker upgrade is already on the way. And honestly, I think he has just the right amount of mutas that he can keep this back until he has lurkers in position. And as that occurs, it's like, let's, let's watch for the factory, right? If your opponent already has lurkers in position in three gas and then you start your factory, that is a very, very bad position because the bio is doing nothing for you. Nothing. It will keep map control and that's about it. Like, we might actually see Scan try to bust regardless, right? So, we have a factory on the way. He does know he needs to tech up. He hasn't really been able to get out onto the map. SCV actually gets a really good scout in here. Damn, man. Sees the timing of the Queen's Nest and the Hydralisk then. Now, Scan may just push across the map because he sees the Hydralist Den is done. I don't think he knows the exact moment that that finished. But basically, if you're going for something like this and they start Hydralist Den, that means they're spending a lot of gas on Lurker upgrades and, and all that. So they're not going to have as many mutas as they would have generally scaled compared to your marine production. So you just push across the map. 
right? If they're making something with their gas, they're not making another thing with their gas, I guess is the simple way to put this. Okay, so Yoon is just, you see how heavily he's dogging this. He's not even really trying to kill. He's just like, hey, I could, I could kill stuff. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Move slowly, right? <laughs> and of course, if Scan spreads out too much, maybe Yoon can get a few pickoffs. But Scan starts to move. Let's take a look. Okay, an Overlord going to get caught in the middle. That's kind of nice. Ooh, we're getting close, right? We're getting close. Lurker eggs are, ha are morphing. There's one. He might need to put one on a ramp. There's a possibility Scan can break this third base. This is unbreakable. In fact, Yoon made too many lurkers here and not enough here. This is an issue. Oh my god, he catches one as it walks down. I think, yeah, Scan's going to break this, I'm almost certain. Now, Yoon does jump on and catch some bio there, but this is too much. You see how Yoon is just running? Yeah. Oh. What? Oh, dude. If he targets up there. Oh, if he had targeted one, he just assumed that scan would scan. Uh, What would a scan do if a scan could scan? Would? Okay, I'm going to re-record this. This is terrible. Um, Now, scan kills the third, right? That was, that was pretty tight. I think the big issue was just where he was making lurkers. Making five here and, like, one and then a second one there is not it. If he makes, like three and two i think he holds everything and he's way ahead but now scan killing that third base way way ahead he's got to feel fantastic he's getting his star ports he's getting his science facility he's going to continue his upgrades for it. he has one one already with which is just fantastic do we even have an evolution chamber no we do not so yoon is in a very terrible position right now uh he is going up towards hive so we'll see if he's able to do anything with that hive the science vessels are not particularly quick uh, but, you know, just something something to think about is can he produce vessels while maintaining map control and get those irradiates off, right? Because there is still, like, there is still possibilities here for you, and the game is not done, right? Even though Scan is at an advantage right now, it doesn't mean he can go kill his opponent. When you get a certain amount of lurkers, that's just not possible anymore. Look, three here, three on hold position here couple up these ramps right he's got a good spread of defense overall and scan without vessels has to be really careful where he walks notice how he's pulled if you look at this right he's pulled all of his units back into this general part of the map his part of the map right he knows there's no lurkers in here he was out in the map the thing is everywhere that's dark or was dark during that push he doesn't know if there's lurkers on hold position there as soon as lurkers out you have to watch for that you know when that was discovered it changed Terran versus Protoss completely. Before uh, hold position Lurker was discovered, you would actually just walk around with bio and just react really quickly if Lurker spines came out. You'd get hit once, you'd be like, okay, and you run back and maybe you lose a couple of units, but you could figure out where they are and then you had scans that you could utilize. Obviously, science vessels were still useful, but it wasn't like this where it's like, okay, you have to have scans to do anything. Now, it looks like these uh, drones that did run away from the third base get caught by scan. Not a big surprise there. Muta's trying to reduce that vessel count. Not going to be able to quite get it. Almost up into that uh, irradiate area of uh, energy. Keeps a bio force over here. He might want to just send an SCV there as well and go four base. This does feel like a game where you might want to just go four base quickly. Uh, I got to tell you, I I feel like I actually would, I should check this win rate, but. The games where I see Terran take a third base against Zerg, I feel like they lose much more often, whereas when they go into four base, because third base and fourth base are almost at the same time in this matchup, okay? So just to try to put that out there for you, right? Uh, it, and the thing is, there's two different ways to play. Obviously, you're going to stifle your production a little bit by getting the fourth. But yeah, I feel like I see more big game macro wins where Terran goes four base right away. Three, if you go three base and keep the pressure up, like there is more pressure, right? So yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll talk more about that later. We'll we'll see how this game actually ends up turning out. And he does take it quickly, okay. So I think that that is going to be pretty good. One thing I want to say that I see here, Science Vessel Energy, this is something I know is going to trend for the rest of time getting science vessel energy in this matchup and in fact i think it's going to trend in, in terran versus protoss as well it is a hundred percent worth it it's actually something i've been thinking a lot about and been getting more and more in my games 
it is amazing science vessel energy they all start with 13 more energy they can bank more if you're not using them into more irradiates right it makes it so you can use three irradiates on a full vessel instead of two uh yeah so very cool to see that out of scan now he is stimming over here and ooh, the defiler so it is turning into like a lurker hydra defiler comp okay and that is that is a very hard composition to play against. We're going to see if Scan goes into uh, siege tanks or not. Oh, my God. Firebat time. <laughs> the Firebat meta, guys. We talked about that a lot lately. Uh, okay, so, dude, there's too much going on, actually. Like, there's so much I want to talk about here. So, uh, Hydra Lurker Defiler is notoriously the hardest thing to kill for Terran. Like, you just can't kill it. It's so many defilers. They plague for days. They dark swarm for decades. And it's just like very hard to break through. So you have to kind of grind them down. So if your opponent is heavy vessel marine, this is a good way to play to make sure that they're just not going to get you. Right? Like you're you're going to see plagues. Watch. Actually, this is an excellent move. Splitting a few units up to target that down is exactly what you want to do. And there's no second defiler here because unit is behind. A lot of times in an even game, they'll have more units there already and get a plague off regardless. Now, looking at this, okay, brings the vessels up. Hydra's extremely good with that range upgrade at zoning out the irradiates, right? So it's actually very hard to hit a good irradiate on defilers here. And look, he's coming up. Gets a sick plague. There it is. Would like to see restoration. I think that's something that's going to trend forward. Oh, my God. Almost missed this. A little stim up the ramp. There was only, like, one lurker there. So he actually gets on top of it with those fire bats, draws those attacks to the side, and is going to end up killing just about every drone. Holy crap. Really, really well done attack there from Scan. Keeping him busy with this group over here. Sending the secondary group up to this base to kill. Scan in complete control of this game. Like, again, Yoon's comp is very close to unkillable. Like, the hardest thing to kill in the entire game uh, for Terran. And, well, that would make it the hardest thing to kill in the entire game regardless. Now, uh, he's killed every drone here. He killed the third before. He killed every drone at the new third. Okay, there's a fourth base up. Scan has had four base for a very long time. He has added factories, by the way. And we'll see as, if he gets into those siege tanks a bit. Uh, getting an armory because you do want to get those attack upgrades. They're just fantastic on Siege Hanks. Plus five to their explosive damage in Siege mode is pretty insane. And Scan continues his upgrades. He has three, three on the way. For Yoon, Yoon only has plus one care pace and he has plus one attack on the way. Now, Plague kind of undoes upgrades. Okay, Plague and Dark Swarm. Dark Swarm makes the plus attack not really do anything. And Plague makes the plus armor not really do anything, right? If the Marines at one health and they can't deal damage to Hydra's under Swarm, right? So it's... When I look at these upgrades, if it was not specifically a very Defiler-heavy composition, I'd be like, yeah, there's 0% chance to lose, right? But with the Defiler, you know, it does add that little bit of flexibility in there uh, where the upgrades are not going to matter as much. Yeah, throwing some plagues down, throwing down the Dark Swarm. He is going to have to run away from this area, probably. Maybe he keeps that as a zoning area. Scan continuing to just send Marines out. Notice that he is starting to produce more Fire Bats. We can see in the production tab, five bats at a time right now. Love to see it. When you're ahead like this against this comp, sometimes you can go heavy Fire Bat and try to break them. The problem is, if that doesn't work, Zerga actually catches up. <laughs> <laughs> I know it seems like impossible. It's 193 to 109 supply. But, like, notice how Scan can't really kill anything. Like, he's holding everything back. He's got bio forces absolutely everywhere. But you're not really killing things. And look at this. He just brings these hydras forward. Normally, what you'll do is you'll turn these into lurker eggs and then back up. And then the bio force has a hard time actually getting through that. Now, get some good irradiates right there. Good plague goes off, but like obviously very much more cost efficient for scan. Four, five lurkers up there, so you can't really go up. Dude, this is like scan is so far ahead and has been so far ahead all game. I feel like Yuna is doing a very good job of showing us why that composition is so popular and why it's so hard to kill. Like he's still zoning out his whole part of the map. Four gas is pretty scary for Zerg still. Now, coming forward, he is getting a second carapace upgrade. It, it, dude, it's going to take forever for these upgrades to actually matter. Now, look, firebats are trying to come up, but, like, 
Yeah, the lurker underneath the dark storm just clears them all, and then siege tanks come up. So it's like, okay, this is invincible for now, unless there's a bunch of fire bats or radiates. But it does push the hydras back at least, right? Getting more dark storms ready. Scan. Not really thinking about another base as of yet. Look at all the bunkers he's making, by the way. And you might look at this and say, like, oh, is he defending too much? He's so far ahead. The answer is no. He's like, he needs to just slow everything down because you can actually make a pretty strong attack with this where you just bring several defilers, lurker, uh, hydrogen, just throw down a path of dark swarms and run through it because the lurkers will kill fire bats and then, you know, the lurkers basically kill everything under the dark storm and then the hydras push everything back. So, like, the fa I think it's really smart that he's making all these bunkers. I haven't seen this before against this comp, but this makes a lot of sense to me. I, I've lost a lot of bases to this, even one way ahead. So, like, basically, they'll push up and one Dark Storm will clear this. Maybe the second one clears this. And then it's like, okay, we still have a couple. Maybe we can still hold the base while our reinforcements come to clean up that composition from behind. Because otherwise, let's say you just have, like, two in the front. One Dark Storm clears it, your base is dead. Right? So he's just trying to keep his stuff alive. Now, Yoon attacks into the center here. That is the most insane plague ever. Holy crap, that was a good plague. Uh, you know, the lurker underneath here will be able to clear this siege tank. <laughs> kind of funny. Irradiates that one lurker. Comes up with his bioforce. You can see the plague just kind of negating a lot of those upgrades. And the hydras are going to be able to carve through all of this. Uh, but look, like there's so much damage, so much pressure going through everywhere from Scan. I think he's played this game super, super beautifully. Yoon does not have a lot going on. He still has playable supply though, right? Like 110, that's still like very hard to kill. Uh, uh, he's going to lose his space. If you lose this space, the game's basically done. Like there's nothing you can... Nothing much you can do. I can't believe he's getting vehicle plating. That's weird. Uh, GG Scan gonna take down game number one.